Hello everyone. Today I'm going to make what I hope is four very quick scrapbook layouts using this a little bit festive. You can see that this pack just comes with three pieces of paper and two of them have the traditional type Christmas sort of patterns on them and the reverse side is the bright red and then this one here are the blue tones. And I spoke about this in my unboxing video. I think this paper is going to be really good for school photos rather than for Christmas photos for me being in Australia or baby photos I think it'll be really cool for that as well so I'm not going to be using this one today and what I'm going to do is punch out all of these die cuts you can see they all pop out very very easily there are two sheets of die cuts plus there is well actually there's three sheets of die cuts two sheets are all icons and one sheet is a, like a border strip and then almost like pocket cards here but you can punch this one out and have a little frame so I'm going to go ahead punch all of these out and then I'm going to sort all of these into groupings so that like is with like. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment when I've done all of the sorting. You don't need to watch me push all of these pieces out. So with the magic of video, I've got everything all sorted here. I'll just turn this around the right way for you. And I'll show you my thought process with this. So I've made four different piles here and I've grouped them almost like with like. So I'm gonna talk you through the process of this and then I'm gonna show you the layouts that I'm gonna create with them. So this one here has similar tones and I put all of these baubles together and then I put all things related to gingerbread together and baking for Christmas. And there's another bauble, another bauble here. This little leaf sprig here goes with the tones in this paper, so that sort of goes together. You can see I've got a gingerbread man and a Christmas tree cookie. And then this wreath here has the ornaments as well. So this could effectively be two different piles to spread across pages, but there's not quite enough elements here. So I'm going to combine the two of those. And I'm still debating about this little bow here, but I'm going to leave it with this set. The next set I went through was a bit of a fun set. I've got the Christmas lights frame, and then I pulled out the matching wreath style here with the Christmas lights. I've got the fun truck here with the Christmas tree and these stockings, some gifts, a teddy bear, and also as another stocking here. So I felt like they all went together. And I'm still debating about this one at the moment and I'll show you why. This one here, I've gone for this frame, this wreath, and I might bring in another wreath with this one. The little drum kit, the sled, some candy canes, more gifts because I felt like they tied in really well with this one. And I picked out this Christmas tree because this has got some gold foil treatment. I love the gold foil treatment on some of these elements here, even on this little gift and the bow here. And a little peppermint lolly because that goes with the candy canes. So this one has a Christmas tree. This one doesn't have a Christmas tree. And this one isn't going to have a Christmas tree because it's got all of the baubles. I'll just put this one off to the side and talk you through this collection. So I've got this Christmas tree here, which I was thinking I was gonna put with this one, but these are the more formal type or floral type collection that I've put together from these die cuts. So I've got a ribbon frame, a lovely large poinsettia. I'll probably trim that one down so I can spread it across to make two elements of it. I've got two wreaths elements here that could be used for journal spots, another bow, and I've put this one here with this because it goes perfectly with this frame. And I think it will work really well on this wreath here. So there are three circle elements with this one, a little branch, and then I'm putting like with like. So these branches go together. I've got another poinsettia element to go with the large poinsettia, another element here that's got similar leaves with it and the holly and this one is another pine piece and I was going to put this Christmas tree with this sorting but I decided that I would swap this around bring this one in because the pine needles are very similar to the leaf style in this arrangement and then I thought I would bring this Christmas tree over to this collection because it's a bit whimsical and a bit fun and I think it will suit this quite well and I'm going to fussy cut this one out rather than leaving it as a whole card so there are my sortings for four scrapbook layers that I'm going to make out of this kit. This was another die cut piece and I'm not sure with this one which grouping it's going to sit with. What I might do for this video is show you how I've created one of the layouts and then bring in the completed pages for the others. But I'm very excited to be playing with this. I have got some other little die cut elements here that have pushed straight out of here. So I'm going to just put those into a little bowl. I wanted to keep them contained in a little Ziploc bag until I was ready to work with this because I thought I just might lose them 
with them all being separate. So I'm just going to put them all in there so I can see them. You can see there's a little banner here, another little strip. This one I think I'm going to put these aside to go with that blue paper because I think that will work quite well with a school project. And then I've got all my little gold foil stars in here ready to add to my pages and I'm not going to lose them. Maybe what I will do is make a little banner out of this gold foil piece. I think that would be quite a good use of that section. These are the papers that I'm going to work with and you can see they go across each of these groupings. It'll work very well. And the other thing I'm going to bring in is some gold glitter paper and some red glitter paper to add little accents to it. I've gone ahead and done some cutting. So I've got a couple of two inch strips and three inch strips of the pattern paper. And my mats here are going to be from a CTMH color that was called Jade, which I think matches in really well with this pattern paper. I went through quite a few greens and I'm pre-cutting a few sets of these for my ladies and I don't quite have enough of the card stock. I think it's garden green that matches this one. I'm just gonna bring this back in so I can double check. So yes, it is, it's garden green. Oh, or granny apple green would go with it as well. I think what I'll do for all of these pattern papers is ink the edges up because it's white on white here. Now I have white daisy and the Stampin' Up color is called white willow and it's pretty much exactly the same as this. I did try to put basic white but the brighter white I think works a lot better. So I'm just going around the edges of all of these. So you can see that makes a big difference and helps the paper stand out against the white. As these are two different shades of white, it really needed that black inking to separate that. So I'll do the other ones off camera, but I just wanted to show you where I think I'm heading with this layout. I've got a six by eight inch mat here and I've got a six by 12 inch mat. So when I trim my photos down, I can fit two trimmed six by four photos next to each other here. And I'm thinking I'll bring in some of the gold glitter paper. Now I cut some strips and I'm not sure if I want to use quarter inch strips or that might be a little bit too heavy on each side of here. I'm just going to put this down and see what I like the look of. I'm all thumbs today. So here we go. This is just a quick little fit to see what I like the look of. I wanted to separate the green out from this green Christmas tree pattern. And this one will go along this edge and this photo section will sit partially over the top of the pattern paper here. So now I'm gonna take this away. I can use these for something else. So I never throw out my strips of glitter paper. And I've got 16th of an inch strips here. So, well actually they might be eighth of an inch. Yes, they are, they eighth of an inch strips. 16th of an inch would be awfully tiny. I think I'm liking how that looks better. The gold was just a little bit too heavy, I think. I know that sounds strange. It's only an eighth of an inch difference, but I think I prefer the eighth of an inch strips. I'm going to have two more trimmed six by four photos here. And remember this frame. So this whole collection was designed before Stampin' Up! started launching scrapbooking projects. So this could be designed to have a Christmas photo behind it that you put on a card and send out. But I wanted to make some scrapbook layouts with these gorgeous pieces. So this piece here is five inches by three and three quarters. So I just need to trim a photo down to put behind there. And then I've got this other wreath element here, which I think I'm going to tuck in this section so I don't want to put them both on the same page because they're quite similar and then my little stocking here rather than putting it up the top there because it looks like it's floating a little bit I am going to put it so that it will sit on the edge of this gold strip here and I'm going to put a gem or a dot on there just to look like it's anchored to that piece and have it coming across the top portion of that photo these are the other pieces that I've put aside in a grouping for this so I've got my tree and remember, I'm going to ink around the edges of these. This is just a dry fit and me working through the process of how I'm going to lay this out. Now, sometimes when you're looking at the die cuts, because they're designed for cards, you might put just the teddy bear with these gifts and the scale looks quite good. But then when I bring in the truck here, the gifts become a little bit too large. So I do need to separate those out. So I think what I will do is a classic grouping 
of having the gifts with the tree and then the little teddy bear underneath. I need to move these over a little bit because I don't want this portion of my photo to be obstructed too much. I know the photo I'm going to put on here, the people are more to the right side of this with my Christmas tree in the background there. And then I've got this stocking. Now it's a bit large to go with here and I've got this truck here as well. But I think what I want to do is just hang the stocking from this section over here. So I'm taking this one away because the scale of this truck does not quite work with the rest of the elements on here. Now I don't have a title on here and because I'm making up kits I need to either die cut or do one with my Cricut. So I'm going to adhere all of this down and then work out what title I'm going to do and how I'm going to do that and come back with the finished project as well as the other layouts using the die cuts that I grouped together before. There's been a slight change of plans since I went away to start adhering everything down. I actually cut that frame apart with the lights. It was just sitting there looking a little bit like it didn't belong. So all I've done is cut into the frame and then just separated the light bulbs out so that I can have strands going across the bottom of this photo here. So I've got two sections and then another little one there. And this one I've cut up a little bit so that I can manipulate it so that it will work. And you can see there's going to be green that will show underneath here. So I've taken a little piece from the inside section of this because it's the same tone. And I'm just going to tuck that up underneath that photo mat there so that when I start adhering these down, and I'm going to tuck them a little bit under, I've got my adhesive on here. So they're gonna go a little bit underneath that photo mat. And then I've gotta put this one on, and I'm trying to keep it so that no two colors are up against each other. And these ones are gonna overlap just a little bit, but I'm fine with that. You can see once the memory protector is on here, you can't tell that I have tucked a little piece underneath here. I haven't adhered these pieces down yet. But I think this finishes the page off beautifully rather than having that frame there that didn't quite flow and it just gives a gorgeous decoration to this. So I'm going to adhere these pieces. I'm going to create a title to put in this section. I'm going to adhere these down, pop the teddy bear up on foam. I've got foam underneath here or dimensionals underneath the tree and I've got my stockings stuck up on dimensionals. This part here I haven't peeled the backing off from it so that I can still slide my photo underneath. I'm much happy with how this looks. I think it's far more balanced. Moving on to the next page now and I'm thinking with my photos I'm going to put them across like this. Now I have just cut this pattern piece of paper here at eight inches in height and then I've cut it at seven inches and used the other five inches over here and then this is a seven inch by eight inch piece of jade and a five inch by eight inch piece of jade. So basically the wide section for the pattern paper is on this side with the wide section of the jade and then vice versa with the narrower one. Now I'm just trying to work out where my photo placements. Most of the photos for all of these layouts are going to be six by fours because that is what most people print their photos at. They can trim them down and do four by fours, but this is for a quick and easy scrapbooking session with the ladies, as I said before. And the elements that I'm bringing in are this group that I have put together here. Let me see, I've put them all over the place because I had a little play with this. So this is the one with this tree. I'm thinking that will go down the bottom and you might notice I have already cut the white section off the bottom of that tree there so it can sit on the bottom. And these gifts I trimmed as well so that I could have gifts on both sides of the tree. So this one's going to sit behind a little bit like this. And this one, even though there is a little section here that's being cut off because it was up against another gift, it doesn't really worry me, but I think that will sit on top like this and I'll put this one up on foam tape. The sleigh is going to sit along here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I do this quite often when I'm sitting things up against something. I like to eliminate a little bit of that white. For this one, I'm just going to trim it a little bit. I'm not going to go right up against the actual base of the sleigh here or the sleigh runners. So there will be a little bit of white there, but for me, that looks a lot better than having a large amount of white at the base of that. For my candy canes, I think I'm gonna put those up the top here and I'll put that little peppermint grouped with that as well. And the drums are gonna sit on the bottom here and I've already trimmed the base of that off. So there's no white outline. And then I've got the wreath and this frame. So I'm thinking I might put the wreath up here 
I'm trying to work this one out. This one I'm a little bit stumped with. I think what I'm going to have to do is get a little bit of white paper here and just trim that out so that can be a little journal spot. I might just do that now. So basically I can just cut around the edge of that and then I'll be able to adhere this white piece behind the wreath because it's going to overlap this section. So maybe that can go up here. I feel like it needs to hang from somewhere though. So let's see what happens if I move this photo over to here and hang it here underneath that one. Or maybe it can go over to this side. Now I've got these pieces here. It doesn't quite work. It's not quite as cohesive as what I thought it was going to be. So what I think I might do is cut a couple of tags. This is an old Stampin' Up! tag punch that I've had Oh, for quite a long time now. I'm going to cut a couple of tags so that I can tuck them in and around this and trim them off with this paper. So I'll be back when I have created those and adhered some of this down. So I've put everything down on here until I come to doing the title, which is going to go across here. I will bring all the layouts in at the end and show you the titles that I've created. And then I had a thought while I was creating these that the real red and white baker's twine would be perfect to put onto these pages. And also these peppermints, they're real red and white adhesive back peppermints. And I think they would look a bit cute scattered around these pages, especially the ones that have got these fun little icons on here. So I'm just going to leave those off to the side to dress up all my pages at the end and do that all in one go. Here are the two tags that I put together. Now where my photos go on here there will be distinction between the white edge of this and of course the photo that goes here and these pieces here are from that frame. So I just cut away two sections here to put on the base of the tags and that dresses them up quite nicely. So now I'm going to move on to the next one and I don't have terribly much pattern paper left so I'm thinking I've got these pieces here. I might have to introduce some other pattern paper or some more colored cardstock to this. I've skipped ahead a little bit and I've done the third and the fourth layout off camera but I just wanted to talk you through what I've done with those and then show you the first two layouts as well because I've done the titles. Now these titles are all done on my Cricut machine and I've used the offset feature so that I've got the outline for them and I've popped them all up on foam tape. I started off with strips of this pattern paper left over. There wasn't that much pattern paper left. These pieces here, if you remember, were a die cut piece and I have just trimmed them in half. I've got a rogue little bit of glitter here I'll just get rid of. And then I've cut them at various lengths. So they go from nine inches to eight inches. This one under here is seven and a half inches. And then whatever is left over, I've put at the top section of this layout here and I've done exactly the same on this side. And that way the pattern flows through, but to separate them so that it wasn't quite pattern next to pattern, it was a little bit busy having that, I've just cut eighth of an inch wide strips of red glitter paper and put those in between each layer. And by doing it this way with a section of it at the bottom and the off-cut pieces at the top of this, it created these perfect little areas to put embellishments and I've used the gingerbread house tree and the little gingerbread man. And there's another element here that was die cut. It was this gift. So these four items here were die cuts. So the remainder of the cookies here have been fussy cut out from that die cut piece. Let me just get this out to show you. I have another packet of this here, as I said at the beginning, I'm making these up into kits. So you can see this is where the cookies came from. That's a die cut piece. And these two elements here are this piece here, which is one die cut card piece as well. So I've just fussy cut out these two and kept them together and then fussy cut around these three here to keep those together and adhere those to the page. I've popped the actual bauble sections up onto foam tape and then just used dot roller to hear the remainder piece direct to page. So it gives a little bit of a dimension and you can see I've used the peppermints on here. So these ones I showed earlier in the video, the real red and white adhesive back peppermints. So they are the finishing little elements to these. And I really love how this came together. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with just these strips of paper. It's a really fun page because these rectangle pieces here sort of look like stacked presents. So if you didn't want to do baking as a theme, you could stamp or die cut out some gifts and change the theme of the page quite easily. So that's layout three that I got from this kit. Layout four was when I ran out of pattern paper. I didn't have enough pattern paper left over to create another piece from this. So what I have done instead is just bring in this jade color here 
And this is a more formal sort of layout here. You can see I've used some of those little gold stars. I had those in a little Ziploc bag because I kept all those pieces together. They're scattered all through the die cuts here and I've used them throughout this page and the first and second layout, which I'm going to show you in a minute. This is the poinsettia. It was very large. So I just sliced that straight down the middle to give the illusion of having two poinsettia arrangements here. And this piece here was another little journal spot or a frame. And I have just trimmed it down so that it has become, it's a little bit hard to move these around. Things just pop out so easily with this. I'm just going to put this somewhere safe. So I've just used one corner for this section, popped it behind this photo mat here, and another section here. This is the same piece. I've just cut it apart so that it frames out the edges of these photos. This is another title that I've cut with my Cricut. It's popped up on foam tape. With the other greenery pieces from the dies, I've just tucked those in and around the poinsettia here and put the smaller one up on top on foam tape. Gorgeous little Christmas tree. I'm hoping the gold foil treatments are picking up on camera. There's gold foil on this tree, on the poinsettia, and also on the baubles as well. So it really is pretty to have all these little gold foil treatments to the die cut pieces. And I'm really happy with how this page came out. Even though it doesn't have any of the pattern paper, I still think it works really well. And I I think that's mainly due to the fact that these die cut pieces are quite large so they don't really need anything else to dress up the page. So I'm going to go back to the second layout so you can see the end result. I decided to put an oversized title here and I've tucked one of those little gold foil stars here from the die cuts just above the eye and I've decorated with the peppermints here and also more of the gold foil elements. Some of the pieces are adhered with foam tape just to give a little bit more dimension and create a little bit more fun to the layout. And then I want to show you the finished result for layout one. Another big Christmas title here. And I'm pretty sure I didn't add this on camera here where I tucked the stocking in behind these elements just to give it a bit more of a grouping. You can see the little peppermint dots. And this one just has some of the gold foil stars here. I kept each design with the stars on one double page spread rather than mixing them all up. So that's the Christmas pages, four layouts from this one pack. But I do have some leftover pieces. I'm just going to bring them in to show you. I had sorted all these into piles at the beginning of the video, but I do have some left over, mainly the wreaths and this frame. But I'm going to use these in either Christmas cards for our 31 days of Christmas card event that the creative design team are doing in October. So make sure you check out the details below. We're getting very excited. It's not too long now to wait till the event kicks off. So there's a video each and every day from the 1st of October. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere like I am, that will be on the 2nd of October. It will be airing first thing in the morning. Registrations do close on the 1st. So if you want to craft along with us, don't miss out on that. It's a full class each day, full video and a full handout as well for all our creations. And the other thing I thought of using these for was making tags with them. My Tag Tuesdays will be starting in November. And this video is a bit late up this week. Usually I try and post every Tuesday and then have another video on another day during the week. But I'm running a bit behind, but I'm hoping to get caught up soon. I just quickly want to show you what this product looks like in the catalogue. You can see it has been designed chiefly for cards, but I really wanted to create some scrapbook layouts. So I'm very pleased that I've managed to make four double page spreads from what is in this collection. And I hope it's inspired you to look at something like this and see past the fact that it is all card designs here and know that you can create with this type of collection and make some gorgeous scrapbook layouts. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. As always, happy crafting. I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.